Welcome to Olivia's Blooms. If you are new to my channel, I'm gardening in Charlottesville, Virginia, Zone 7B. I'm a home gardener who loves growing my own cut flowers and home decor with a focus on sustainable, regenerative, and eco-friendly practices. But most importantly, I'm here to support, share with, and learn from other gardeners. So I hope you will join me in growing this amazing gardening community. Hey guys, welcome back to Olivia's Blooms. Today we're talking all about sweet peas and I'm gonna be planting my sweet peas for the 2024 season. It's January 7th, sweet peas are a cool flower, so it's time to get them going. I'm gonna tell you about the sweet peas I'm growing, how I grow them, and just a few pieces of information about sweet peas in general. Sweet peas are in the pea family. They are, however, not edible. They are toxic. And so just some things to consider when you're growing them. If you are growing regular peas for eating or if you have children or pets that like to eat your plants, just be careful about where you plant them. And they are grown on very similarly to regular peas. I actually grow mine the exact same way. And sweet pea seeds are very large. I'm gonna show you some here. So pretty easy to handle. They're actually really easy to save from year to year. And today I'm gonna be planting seeds that I saved from my own plants last year. And some people recommend soaking these overnight beforehand. Now I've seen lots of experienced gardeners who say they don't need to soak them and some say they notice a difference. I'm going to be doing mine both ways this year because I want to see if it's really necessary on my part and I like to experiment and see anytime I can save myself time I'd like to take that route. Another really important fact about sweet peas is they don't tend to like their roots disturbed. And that's why I'm gonna be planting mine in what are called root trainers. I follow Erin from The Impatient Gardener who grows tons of beautiful sweet peas. And she recommended root trainers. And what root trainers are, and I'll give you a close up look of mine, but they are these plastic grow trays that open up like this and so you can easily access the roots without having to move the plant around. It also, they're extra long growing space so that the roots can grow long, which sweet peas like nice long roots without again having to disturb them if they were in a seed tray. Now, I will say another experiment I'm doing this year because there have been several gardeners that have grown sweet peas in soil blocks. I'm trying those because soil blocks are supposed to promote healthier root growth because the roots are air pruned. So we'll see how it goes. I would love to be able to grow them in soil blocks and reduce the amount of plastic that I have. Now, sweet peas as a cut flower are very popular because mainly their scent and Mine smelled amazing last year and they also bloom very early and very long. They bloomed for months for me. And what I also love about them is they have the most vibrant colors. Now you can find sweet peas in the whole color range. They have tons of different amazing colors all the way from pastels to more on the bright side, which is what I tend to go towards. So I'm going to be growing the same varieties I grew last year. And if you saw my previous video from earlier this year about what I'm growing, I go more in depth about which exact varieties I'm growing. So I'm mainly growing seed that I saved for my own sweet peas last year, but I added on a beautiful orange color that I think will complement them well. Another thing to know about sweet peas is they do not last super long in the vase, but I did get a good five days out of mine and I was cutting buckets and buckets every other day. So to me, it was super easy to just replace them every few days and they're easy to cut. And they also create, if you want a dramatic effect, a nice tall wall of beautiful vines. And last year, I wish I had pictures, but I put a trellis up on my deck. And so there was a really gorgeous wall of sweet peas for about a month that we really enjoyed. Sweet peas are heavy feeders and so when you plant them, Florette recommends putting in some manure or some sort of amendment that's going to feed them really well. I followed those instructions. I had a lot of success. One thing I struggled with last year with all my peas, both my edible peas and my 
cut flower peas was real bad aphids and that's another reason why I'm trying different methods to see if healthier plants or different growing methods maybe can prevent some of those aphid issues but even with the aphids I enjoyed them so much all my friends and family enjoyed them so much so I'm definitely growing these again all right let me show you up close the root trainers I'm using and how I'm going to be planting mine this year. It is January 7th. I give my sweet peas about six to eight weeks to grow on before I plant them in very early spring, which for me is about February 15th into early March, so a two week window. So I like to have mine ready to go. And once that early spring season hits, I plant them in the ground and they establish and then they take off in the spring. And for me, they bloomed about end of May through June. Here's a close up of the seeds. They're very large and you can see they, they look like they have a hard shell, which is why a lot of gardeners recommend both soaking and or nicking them. Here are my root trainers. I got them from Gardener's Edge and they were a little pricey, which is another reason I'm trying to see if I can get soil blocks to work because these here are a flimsy plastic. I already have a few that have started to rip and they don't sell just the replacements and so you need to buy the whole tray again. But you can see how this slit here, once they're ready to be planted, you pull these out. And actually I have one I can show you down here. You pull them out and you open them up and they expose the roots of the sweet peas and you can just slide them right out without a lot of disturbance and plant them in the ground. Another nice thing about the root trainers is they come with their own dome that fits directly over, which is a really nice bonus. So what I'm using in these root trainers to grow my sweet peas is just a regular potting soil. I happen to have the Fox Farms potting soil on hand, so that's what I'm using. Last year I used the Fort V compost that's actually made for soil blocking, but I had a lot of it and I used it in here and the sweet peas loved that. So if you buy some of that for your soil blocking, you can also use that to grow sweet peas. We'll see how the potting soil does. I did add some wool pellets to try and give them extra nitrogen. We'll see if that works and how they do in this type of soil. And then here are the sweet peas that I soaked. And you can soak them in anything. You just need water and a container to hold them in. And these have been soaking for 24 hours. Planting them is very easy. They like to be planted about one inch deep, so I make a hole one inch deep. I drop my seed in, and then I cover it back up. And I'm going to spray the, the top of these, but because they usually germinate very quickly for me, I'm not going to cover these in vermiculite. I didn't last year, and we did great. I will also say these germinated very quickly without heat and because these are cool season flowers i'm going to germinate them again just on my regular rack i'm not going to put them on a heat mat and that saves me space on my heat mats because you can see i've already taken up a lot of space so that's another nice benefit of these so i'm going to go ahead and finish planting all of these and then i'll show you the final product Another tool you can use to make the job easier is just a pencil or this is a little tool I got with one of my succulent accessory gifts and this makes it even faster and easier. You just poke a hole and then you drop your seeds in, but not necessary to have. All right, once the seeds are in their holes, you're going to want to cover them up. You could either add more soil on top or I just push some of the soil that's already in here over the top. That makes the job easier and faster and worked great for me last time. Now, a couple other notes. You can plant two seeds per hole and sometimes if I have extra, I'll throw in a couple extra seeds here and there. But I experienced incredible germination rate with mine. I want to say there was only one or two cells out of, I had about um, 
almost 70, I think it's 232 trays. So that's really great germination rate. And another note is you probably will want to label if you want to know which color is which. I am going to be mixing mine all up. Last year I made a pretty pattern, but in the end I couldn't really see it, so I don't know that it was worth my time. So this year I am just going to be mixing them all up and seeing what I get. All of the colors are beautiful to me. And it is that simple. That took me all of about 10 minutes, maybe less. And now we just put the lid on and put it under the lights. Now I'm filling up my second tray, and I should have mentioned before, but you always want to use pre-moistened soil. And I'm just slightly tamping down the cells. You don't want to compact the soil, but you want to make sure it's filled all the way to the bottom so that those sweet peas have as much soil to grow through as possible. Now, if you're in a warmer climate like mine, you also might try overwintering them. I believe there are some flower farmers um, in zones eight and above who can overwinter theirs and plant them in the fall. All right, there's the second tray filled. Now let's get this one planted up. <laughs> about watering sweet peas if you are going to be using the root trainers is I like to still try and bottom water mine and what I'll do is I'll take a 10 20 tray or you could take any tray that fits your root trainers and fill the bottom with water and then simply pick up the whole tray and I let it sit in the water for a good five to ten minutes and I found that that worked really well. Now you only really probably need to do that once the peas are up and going. All right, there they are. Now, because the peas are buried an inch deep, they probably, I would guess, don't need light. So if you don't have lights to put them under, you're probably gonna be fine. I just put mine here and that's what worked for me last year. So I'm gonna use the exact same method again. So that's planting sweet peas. Now let me show you real quick close-up of the ones I planted in soil blocks the other day. Here are my sweet peas in the soil blocks. Not much to see here, but I did use them in the four different types of soil for the soil experiment that I'm trying. And if you watched my last video, you'll know more about that and exactly how I made these soil blocks. But fingers crossed that these work well because this would be a great way to grow sweet peas with less plastic. For those of you who, like me, like to do soil blocking and a much easier way to plant them I think too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and had as much fun planting sweet peas as I did today. Okay guys, instant gratification. I am now showing you what the peas look like. We are almost exactly a week later and I noticed they germinated a lot more slowly this year for whatever reason. And there's still a lot that I think need to germinate. But you can see we've got lots up and going. Here's the second tray. Mm, I can almost smell them already. Here's a peek at the soil blocks. Not great germination so far. I don't know if these are germinating more slowly for some reason or if I'm gonna get just less germination overall. I'm not sure why that is. I started these actually a day before the ones in the tray. It could be that these are on the heat. Perhaps that's affecting them, but I'm gonna give them at least another week because sweet peas can take up to two weeks to germinate. But I just wanted to give you guys a little update because who doesn't love seeing instant results? 